Hi, my name is Rod Goodwill. I've been part of the Department of Surgery since 2006 and just recently, in the last 12 months, I've taken on a, a lab head position in that department. I'm situated at the Royal Melbourne Hospital and I work on uh, brain tumours and specifically on glioblastoma multiform, which is the most common and also the most severe form of, of brain tumour. Um, there's two main aspects of what we do um, in my lab. It's a, it's, a, it's a joint lab with Andrew Marikoff, who's a neurosurgeon in our department. Um, we look at two things. The first one's mainly looking at um, biomarkers for overall survival. As everyone would know, or uh, most people would know, uh, glioblastoma patients have very poor survival. The average survival for those guys is about 14 months. Um, but within that group, within that average, we have patients who have re very, very poor survival within weeks and months of, of um, only surviving only about a month and then we have others who survive sometimes out to two or three years or a little bit longer so what we're trying to work out is the differences from a molecular point of view as to why some patients actually survive a little bit better than others and we've got a whole bunch of projects in our lab um, we've got a student working on some microRNA differences comparing uh, patient samples who from patients who have lived a little bit longer compared to shorter surviving um, patients. So he's looking at some microRNA um, differences. We've got another student looking at some gene expression differences and he's now starting to put them into animal models. We've also got some uh, students looking at some signalling differences. So what we think is that there's a whole bunch of signalling molecules promoting uh, glioblastoma survival and glioblastoma proliferation, which ultimately kills the, the patient. Um, and we're trying to compare the differences from signalling from patients with better survival versus poor survival. The other aspect of, of what we do is looking at resistance to treatment. So most glioblastoma patients get um, temozolomide and radiotherapy follow, um, after their surgery. Um, but generally this treatment doesn't actually do too much in, in prolonging survival. You only get a couple of two to three month increase with, with this treatment. So basically these tumours are, are resistant to this treatment. Um, so again what we're trying to look for is the, the molecular mechanisms, some of the signalling molecules, some of the gene expression molecule uh, differences in gene expression which leads to um, resistance. And we think that there's quite a lot of signalling um, sort of growth factor and cytokine stimulated signalling which promotes pro-survival and pro-signalling um, molecules that, that promote uh, resistance to treatment. So we've got some projects in the lab looking at that. Um, one of the main signalling molecules we're looking at is, is STAT3. STAT3 is a, a cytokine, uh, a, a protein which is stimulated by cytokines and growth factors and we think that the higher activation of STAT3 is, is driving resistance to therapy. Okay, so once we've recognised the differences in either signalling uh, activation of some proteins or other differences in gene expression from a survival point of view or also from a resistance to treatment point of view, what we then want to do is come up with some therapeutics which target these signalling molecules or, or genes. And there's plenty of uh, molecules out there which are uh, FDA approved in other cancers. Most of these agents haven't been used in glioblastoma so once we've identified some key markers which could um, predict and uh, survival, um, we'll start using therapeutics which will um, target those molecules and if we can inhibit those molecules hopefully we'll be able to prolong the survival of patients. So we'll be doing that firstly in animal models in our lab but eventually we want to transfer that into, into clinical practice.